Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Good yuntiv. I hope everyone's fast. If you are fasting, is um, spiritually enlightening and uh, connecting you to the spirit of this day. Our afternoon service begins on page 234, and appropriately, it is a service that begins with a prayer for peace. I forget if we begin with a musical piece, though. <laughs> Early will I see We cannot merely pray to you, O God, to banish war, for you have filled the world with paths to peace, if only we would take them. We cannot pray to you to end starvation, for there is food enough for all, if only we would share it. We cannot merely pray to you, O God, to banish, uh, for prejudice to cease. Rather, let us strive to recognize the good in all the diversity that lies before our eyes. We cannot merely pray for you to root out despair, for the spark of hope already waits within the human heart for us to fan it into flame. We must not ask of you, O God, to accomplish the tasks that you have given to us. We cannot shirk. We cannot flee nor avoid our obligations forever. Therefore, we pray, O oh God, for wisdom and will, for courage to do and to become, not only to look on with helpless yearning as though we had no strength. For your sake and ours, speedily and soon, let it be that our world may be safe, that our lives may be blessed. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Il razzo nim refi. Il razzo nim refi. Beg yon. Adonai Suri Ego Ali Oh, may the words of my mouth The meditations of my heart Be acceptable before thee Lord, my rock and my redeemer. O oh, say shalom bim romah. O yah say shalom aleinu. Ve'ako Yisrael. We are God's own creation, made in the very image the divine created as one being with two forms, male and female. 
Our tradition says that God created us through one human being to teach us that whoever destroys a single human soul has destroyed an internal world. And that whoever saves a single soul has sustained the entire world. And that a single human being was created for the sake of peace that none might say, my lineage is greater than yours. God of the beginning, God of the end, God of all living beings, God of all generations. With love you guide the world. With love you walk hand in hand with all the living. You created us in your image, capable of love and justice. That creation's long unfolding, we might be partners with you. You have endowed people with freedom. We must not enslave others. You gave each of us judgment. We must not strive to dictate the course of others. You set before us many paths to tread that we might search and find a way that is true for us. We thank you, O God, for the gifts of choice. Without it, where would our destiny lie? Where would be our triumphs and our failures? Created in your image, we are called upon to choose. Let our reflections help us bring into our lives the harmony we seek and the love we could share. of Psalm 23, we are reminded that God is with us every step of the way. Through the dark times, there is hope because God is at our side. As we turn to page 241, we turn our souls in repentance to God, asking for forgiveness, thus once again trying to walk side by side on the right path. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha. We have sinned against life by failing to work for peace. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha. We have sinned against life by keeping silent in the face of injustice. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha. We have sinned against life by ignoring those who suffer in distant lands. 
We have sinned against life by forgetting the poor in our own need. We have failed to respect those made in the image of God. We have withheld our love from those who depend on us. We have engaged in gossip and repeated slander. We have distorted the truth for our own advantage. We have confronted fashion and not to conscience. We have indulged in despair and heeded the cynics. We have given meager support to our houses of worship. We have sinned against ourselves and paid scant heat to the life of the Spirit. We have sinned against ourselves and not risen to fulfill the best that is in us. For all these, O God of mercy, forgive us, pardon us, grant us atonement. us to change our ways. But how can we? Is not our future already largely determined by our past, by the goals we have pursued, the habits we have formed, the relationships we have established, the countless choices, large and small, which have made over the years? Is not each of our lives like a book written in our own hand and from the chapters already concluded, cannot the next chapter be predicted? And yet our destiny is not unalterable, for God has made us free. However strong may be the shackles of our past, we can break their hold. We can change the course and thereby escape from the sequence of events which we ourselves have set in motion. We can write a new and better chapter, but to do so requires a supreme effort, the effort of teshuva, of earnest resolve to lead to a better life, to urge us and to help us to make such an effort is the purpose of these holy days. If we seize them, we seize that opportunity they offer. We can free ourselves from our past and so avert the destiny to which we already all, all would all would otherwise have led. On Rosh Hashanah, we reflect. On Yom Kippur, we consider who shall live for the sake of others and who, when they die, shall leave behind a heritage of love and of life. Who shall burn with fires of greed and jealousy? And who shall drown in waters of despair? Who shall hunger for the good? And who shall thirst for the justice and right? Whose tongue shall be a thrusting dagger? And whose word shall heal and make for peace? Who shall be plagued by fear of the world? And who shall suffocate for lack of love and friendship? Who shall rest peacefully at the end of the day? 
who shall lie sleepless on a bed of pain or anxiety? Who shall go forth in the quest for truth? And who shall be locked within the prison of the self? Who shall be serene in every storm? And who shall be troubled by every passing breeze? Who shall be poor in the midst of possessions? And who shall be rich in the country? Repentance, prayer, and charity, these return us to God. Forgiven the past, renewed for tomorrow, may we go forth with rejoicing to a year of greater goodness. Unatane tokef kerusha tayum ki Let us proclaim the sacred power of this day. For on this day your dominion is exalted, your throne established in steadfast love. There in truth you reign. You are judge and arbiter, counsel and witness. You write and you seal, you record and recount. You remember deeds long forgotten. You open the book of our days and what is written there proclaims itself for it bears the signature of every human being. The great shofar is sounded, the still small voice is heard. This is a day of judgment. Even the hosts of heaven are judged, and all who dwell on earth stand arrayed before you. On Rosh Hashanah, it is written in the Book of Life. In the Yom, on Yom Kippur, it is sealed. How many shall pass on? How many shall come to be? Who shall live and who shall die? Who shall see ripe age and who shall not? Who shall be secure and who shall be driven? Who shall be tranquil and who shall be troubled? Who shall be humbled and who shall be exalted? Utshuva, utfila, utstaka maravin et ro'ah ha But through repentance, prayer, prayer and, and charity, charity May we share the, the nature, nature of our lives life. after human destiny. Our origin is dust, and dust is our end. Each of us is a shattered urn, grass that must wither, a flower that will fade, a shadow moving on, a cloud passing by, a particle of dust floating on the wind, a dream soon forgotten. But you, O oh God, reign forever. You are the everlasting God. With the great adoration on Yom Kippur afternoon, we recite familiar words of praise which conclude every worship service we have. Here, however, they are set to a particularly majestic music and take on special significance. Our physical act of bowing, therefore, before the ark recalls the ancient tradition of kneeling and prostrating oneself in reverence at this moment on the most sacred of days. And so we bow our heads in humility as we proclaim our adoration, the supreme love of our Creator. Please rise. Together, let us adore the ever-living God. We render praise unto you who spread out the heavens and established the earth. Your glory is revealed in the heavens above, and your greatness is manifest throughout the world. You are our God, 
there is none else. Please be seated as we continue on page 271. Today, inspired still by the teachings of our prophets and sages, and challenged by the memories of our own suffering through the ages, let us remember and reach out to the oppressed of the earth. The world for all too many remains dark and cold with fear and rage. Let us restore the rightful heritage of all victims of poverty, hunger, disease, and cruelty to the weak and to the weary, to all those who are imprisoned without cause. Let us remember them. Let us bring them peace. Let us bring peace to every home and comfort to every heart. We know the wisdom by which you, O oh God, would have, uh, let have us live. Oceans of ink have been spilled as if to say, be faithful, be true. Love one another as you love yourselves. This is a vision of a noble life, to cause light to shine through where there is darkness, to remain steadfast in the face of uncertainty, and to provide love and hope where there is despair. Help us, O God, to speed the dawn of our people's ancient messianic hope, the great day of reconciliation, when poverty, prejudice, and hatred no longer threaten to destroy us. When we shall truly make our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks. When nation shall not lift up sword against nation, nor learn war anymore. When our wealth is used to feed the hungry and to heal the sick. When goodness of our fragile planet is preserved and protected for the well-being of all. When we cherish the world and hold it in trust for our children's children. When the weak become strong and the strong compassionate. And that which has been commanded shall come to pass. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. We pause for a few moments as we reflect on the ways in which we can continue to do more to create a just and moral society.
אין כמוך ואלוהים אדוני, ואין כמעשיך. מלכות מלכות כל העולמים, וממשלתך בכל דור ודור. אדוני מלך, אדוני מלאך, אדוני ימלוך לעולם ועד, אדוני עוז לעמו ייתן, אדוני יברך את עמו בשלום. There is none like you, O eternal, and there are no works like yours. Your reign is everlasting, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. You are the eternal ruler. You have always reigned and shall reign forevermore. May God give strength to our people. May God bless all people with the blessing of peace. Beit Yaakov lechu v'nalcha ve'or Adonai, O house of Jacob, come and let us walk by the light of the eternal God. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, hear, O Israel, the eternal is our God, the eternal God is one. Shema time of the year we take out this ancient scroll from Morocco um, because it is rolled to just part of this afternoon's Torah portion and it is stuck there <laughs> it is stuck there probably for a good purpose though because it reminds us each year that we should not leave any of our scrolls unread and it's too fragile to roll anywhere else and so, as we open the scroll, as we read the Holiness Codes, which are the uh, portion for Yom Kippur afternoon, we not only bring the message alive for us, but we, as a congregation, give life and respect to this scroll as well. The blessing for the uh, reading of the Torah can be found on page um, 276. 276, thank you. And then the blessing after is what? On 280. As we read uh, part of the Holiness Codes in Hebrew, followed by reading them all in English. We join together in the blessing of Torah. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvorach Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol HaAmim V'natan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai no tain ha Torah, Amen. Vayedaber Adonai el Moshe lemor. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Daber el kol adat bnei Yisrael. Speak unto the entire community of Israel. Ve'amarta aleichem, and say to them, Kidoshim tihiyu ki kadosh ani Adonai Elohechem. Be holy, for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. The blessing after, and then we will read all of these holiness codes that God is referring to. 
Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet Vichaye Olam Nata Betochenu Baruch Ata Adonai Noten Ha Torah Amen. And what are these codes? These codes you can follow as I read them on page 278 and 279 constitute uh, a moral groundwork for our faith. These are uh, laws that don't deal specifically with ritual, but rather focus our intention on ethical Judaism. These laws are what we strive to work into our lives to walk the ways of God. These are when we're doing the al Shechatanu Lefanechas throughout Yom Kippur, saying we have sinned against you, we are basically um, saying we have strayed from these core laws that we find in the book of Leviticus. The Eternal spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the whole community of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Eternal God, am holy. You shall each revere your mother and father and keep my Sabbaths. I, the Eternal, am your God. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap all the way to the edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall not pick your vineyard bare or gather the fallen fruit of your vineyard. Rather, you shall leave them for the poor and for the stranger. I, the Eternal, am your God. I pause for a second to let you know that this is a very special year. This year... 5,782 is a sabbatical year and therefore observant farmers around the globe are laying their, letting their crops heal and the land heal, finding other ways to make a living throughout this year. I'll be delivering a sermon at some point in the year later to explain this idea of the Shaviti. But this law tells us that we need to take care of the land and the harvest it produces. You shall not steal. You shall not deal deceitfully or falsely with one another. You shall not swear falsely by my name, thus profaning the name of your God. I am the eternal. You shall not oppress your neighbor. Do not commit robbery. The wages of their laborers shall not remain with you overnight until morning. You shall not insult the deaf, nor place a stumbling block before the blind. Show reverence for your God. I am the Eternal. You shall not commit corruption in justice, neither by favoring the poor, nor by showing deference to the powerful. Judge your neighbor with equity. Do not deal callously with others. Do not stand idly by when your neighbor's blood is being shed. I am the Eternal. You shall not hate your brother or your sister in your heart. Rebu rebuke, yes, rebuke your neighbors, but incur no guilt because of them. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against your people. Love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Eternal. When strangers reside in your land, you shall not wrong them. The stranger who resides with you shall be as your own. You shall love them as yourself. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Eternal. I am your God. You shall not commit corruption and justice. You must not, you must be honest in your scales, honest weights, honest dry and liquid measures. I, the Eternal, am your God, who led you out of the land of Egypt. 
you shall observe all my statutes and precepts and do them. I am the eternal. This portion clearly was selected to keep us on the right path, to remind us that we should kind of follow God and keep this world going in the right direction. Our Haftarah, which is the book of Jonah, some of you stayed and studied the text with us during our meditation hour, reminds us of the same message in a slightly different way. Jonah, prophet selected by God to tell Nineveh to change their ways, they, they are living against these rules and laws of, of God, of, of being morally upright people. Change their ways or God will destroy them. But Jonah tries to flee. Jonah tries to shirk his responsibilities. Jonah tries to avoid his own calling to make this world a better place. And so our Haftarah and our Torah portions go hand in hand. We are reminded what we're supposed to do. And we're reminded that we have an ongoing constant responsibility to be accountable for our behaviors. As we read the book of Jonah, which can be found on page 285, I invite those who studied to take a kind of allow our, our uh, text study to bring this alive in a new way. And I invite all who were not at that text study to see in these messages that God is in control of all all that is going on in this story and in our lives and what we need to do is listen and respond with the right uh, attitude that we are present not only for those in need as we'll see in this story but for the earth for our families and ultimately for our God the blessing for the reading of the Haftarah can be found on page 281. Please join me if you know the melody. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher bachar Bimbihim tovim Viratzav edivrehem Hanemarim be'emet Baruch atah Adonai Avocher vatora, uv Moshe avdo, uv Israel amo, uv inivie ha emet vat sedek. We praise our eternal God, ruler of the universe, who has called faithful prophets to speak the words of truth. We thank you for the revelation of Torah, for Moses, your servant, and for Israel, your people, and for the prophets of truth and righteousness. The word of the Eternal came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go at once to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim judgment upon it, for their wickedness has come before me. Jonah started out, however, to flee from, to Tarshish in the service of the Eternal, completely the other direction. He went to Jaffa, and found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid the fare and went aboard and sailed with the others to Tarshish, away from the service of the Eternal. But the Eternal cast a mighty wind upon the sea, and such a tempest came upon the sea that the ship was in danger of breaking up. In their fright, fright the sailors cried out to each his own god, and they flung the cargo over the ship to make the ship lighter. Meanwhile, Jonah had gone to the hold of the vessel where he lay down and fell asleep. The captain went over and cried, How can you sleep so soundly? Up! Call upon your God. Perhaps your God will be kind to us and we will not perish. The men said to one another, let us cast lots and find out on whose account this misfortune has come upon us. They cast lots and fell upon Jonah. They said to him, Tell us 
you, uh, you, you have, tell us, you have brought this misfortune upon us. And what is your business? Where do you come from? What is your country? And what, is, what are your people? I am a Hebrew, Jonah replied. I worship the eternal God of heaven who made both sea and land. The men were greatly terrified and they asked him, What have you done? And when the men learned that he was fleeing from the service of the eternal, for so he told them, they said to him, What must we do to make the sea calm down around us? For the sea is growing more and more stormy. He answered, Heave me overboard, for I know that this terrible storm has came upon you on my account. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard and rained to, to regain the shore, but they could not, for the sea was growing more and more stormy around them. Before throwing him overboard, they cried out to the Eternal, Please, do not let us perish on account of this man. Do not compel us to kill an innocent person. For you, O Eternal, by your will, you have brought this about. And they heaved Jonah overboard, and the sea stopped raging. The men were greatly in awe of God. They offered a sacrifice to the Eternal, and they made vows. God provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah remained in the fish's belly for three days and three nights. Then the Eternal commanded the fish to spew Jonah out upon the land. The word of the Eternal came to Jonah a second time. Go at once to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim there what I tell you. Jonah went at once to Nineveh in accordance with the command of the Eternal. Nineveh was an enormously large city, three days walk across. Jonah started out on his way into the city from the distance of one day's walk and proclaimed, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. And when they heard Jonah's message, the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast of repentance and all put on sackcloth. When the news had reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, he took off his robe, he put on sackcloth and ashes, and as he cried out throughout Nineveh, by decree of the king and his nobles, no person, no animal shall taste anything. They shall not graze, they shall not eat, they shall not drink water. They shall be covered with sackcloth and shall cry mightily to God. Let all turn back from their evil and the injustices which they are guilty. Who knows but that God will turn back and relent so that we do not perish. When God saw that they did and how they were turning back from their evil ways, God renounced the punishment and the plan for them and did not carry it out. Pause for a moment. This is why this portion is read. This is the hope of Yom Kippur, that God will hear our pleas and turn a kind eye and heart toward us, accepting our atonement. But for Jonah, this displeased him greatly, and he grieved. He prayed that the word the prayed to the eternal saying eternal one is this not just what i said you would happen when i was still back in my own country this is why i fled beforehand to tarshish i know that you are a compassionate and gracious god endlessly patient abounding in love and uh, renouncing punishment take my life then for i would rather die than live knowing that my mission and all that I did was all unnecessary. The Eternal One replied, Jonah, you are deeply grieved? Now Jonah had left the city and found an easy place in the east of the city. He made a booth there and sat under it under the shade until he 
should see what would happen. And God decided to teach Jonah a lesson through this experience. A gourd sprouted up, which grew over Jonah, to provide shade for his head and save him from discomfort. Jonah was very happy about the plant. But the next day, at dawn, God provided a worm, which attacked the plant so that it withered. And then, when the sun came out, God provided a scorching east wind. The sun beat down on Jonah's head, and he became faint. He begged for death, saying, I would rather die than live. Then Jonah said, "Are you?" Uh, God said to Jonah, Are you so deeply grieved about the death of this gourd? Yes, Jonah replied, So deeply that I want to die. Then the Eternal said, Look how you care for the, about the plant, which you did not work on or cultivate. It appeared overnight and perished overnight. Now, should I not care about Nineveh, a great city and its people and with the children whom I created and cared for? There are more than 120,000 human beings here who do not yet know right from wrong and many other creatures as well. The blessing after the Haftarah. Baruch Atah, Baruch Atarunai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Tzur Kuhal Alamim, Tzadik Bechol HaDorot, HaEl HaNeeman, HaOmer VeOseh, HaMenaber UmKayem, SheKol Devarav Emet VatSedek. We praise you, Eternal One, who's Forgiving love annuls our trespasses year after year. Ruler of the world, you hallow the house of Israel in this day of atonement. Amen. Amen. We now turn in our prayer books to page 290 as we return the Torah to the ark. Please rise. God's teaching is perfect, reviving the soul. God's word is unfailing, making wise the simple. God's precepts are right, delighting the mind. God's, God's guidance is true and altogether just. Behold, a good doctrine has been given.